Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I say to whatever, whatever, whatever. Hello, my friend. It's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Shepherd's Heart. Let's pray together. And Father, we thank you so very, very much for yet another opportunity to study the Word of God. We are told in the Scripture to study, show ourselves approved unto God, workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Truth is what set us free, Father, and so we want to know the truth. Reveal truth to us by your spirit as only, as only you can. Give us the sensitivity to recognize the move of the Holy Spirit. Those of us who are your sons and daughters, we are surely led by the Holy Spirit. So we ask now in the name of Jesus that you give us revelation and insight of the word of God today. Father, I'm so grateful that you've given me yet another opportunity to set before your people, Father, in the name of Jesus, to proclaim this uncompromising gospel to those who are viewing. So I thank you for the anointing that rests up on my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. I give you all glory and all praise for everything that's going to transpire during this telecast. I lift up each and every listener, each and every hearer today. I ask in the name of Jesus that you would move anything that would be a hindrance, anything that would be a stumbling block. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Again, my friends, it's me, Bishop John Stevenson, or that is, <laughs> the preacher and teacher of the Red Sea Baptist Church family. We have been dealing with the subject of the shepherd's heart, and that's what this broadcast is all about, revealing the heart of the shepherd, uh, the great shepherd, the true shepherd, our God, our Savior. There are some things I really want you to be praying today as you view the telecast. I need for you to be praying today because I'm going to say some things that may be a little harsh, some things that are going to be a little hard, but I'm going to say it to you all in love. Hallelujah. So let's take a look at what God is going to say to us. Our foundational scripture for the shepherd's heart <clears throat> is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. That's <laughs> he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. How long, friend? Forever and ever and ever. Somebody say amen. The first body of scripture we want to deal with today as we deal with the shepherd's heart is Nehemiah chapter 8. And as I was preparing to come before you, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me and he began to talk to me about a specific area in Christendom, in our house of worship. And I want to talk to you about it today. And so hear the heart of the shepherd today. Here's what the Holy Spirit said to me, and he wanted me to present it to you. And Bishop is going to do the very best he can to present it to you, saturated in the love of Christ. God is really tired of the kind of things that are going on in and around the pulpit area. He said he is tired of the, the kinds of things, the shenanigans, the things that are going on in and around the pulpit area. He said to me, he said, the pulpit area, watch this family, pray for me. The pulpit area represents, watch this now, the mercy seat. Remember the tabernacle? You go behind the holies of holies. 
there's the Ark of the Covenant and there's a mercy seat. That's the place where God shows up at. And I really want you to hear, hear what God is going to say. He said the pulpit, watch this, is for God to be seen and the stage is for you to be seen. He said the pulpit, listen, the pulpit area is for God to be seen. The stage is for you to be seen. Mm. We've gotten away from the pulpit and we've built stages and platforms. We think the pulpit area is this is religious. That's a religious spirit. Uh, ignorance don't look good on us. It really don't. It don't look good on us. And so we allow the enemy to say stupid things to us. We allow, we, we, get into, we, we follow trends. We follow trends and we follow the ways of man and we leave the ways of God. And because God permits, this is called permissive will, because God permits it, allow us to do things, we think God is all right with it when we didn't consult God in it at all. And so he said, he said he's, he's, he's sick and tired of the kind of things that are going on around and in the pulpit area. He says stages are for you to be seen, but the pulpit is for him to be seen. Man, this is good. And so I want you to really pay attention to what God is saying. Let me, let me, the stage is where a man performs, but the pulpit is where God performs. Come here, somebody. The stage is where man performs, but the pulpit is where God performs his miracles, signs, and wonders. So stages, when we set up stages, people coming to see man, but the pulpit is set up for people to come to see God. Those who are looking for God, the true and living God, Jehovah, the self-existing and eternal God, they're not looking for stages. They're not looking for people to perform for them. They're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. They come looking for this real, true and living God that, that we say we serve. Stages are there. I wrote it down. Stages are where man perform, but the pulpit area is where God performs. In the old tabernacle, it was in the Holy of Holies that the man of God, the priest would go in, the presence of God would be there. The mercy seat was the place where God showed up. The presence of God was in the holies of holies. The pulpit area represents the holies of holies. Anything and anybody does not have right or authority in the pulpit area. Mm hmm. We're not idolizing, idol worshiping anything. There are sacred things about the house of God and the things of God, and we need to keep them sacred. We need to keep them holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. We're going to get to the scripture, but I got to say these things to you because God really wants you to hear what he's saying. The stage is where man performs, but the pulpit area is where God performs. He said, get rid of your stages and renew your pulpit areas so men can see God. He said, get rid of your stages and renew your pulpit areas so men can see God. All right. The stage is where, watch this, you feed your flesh, but the pulpit is where God feeds his people. Oh, I love this right here, man. <laughs> oh, Lord. He said, the stage is where you feed your flesh, but the pulpit area is where God feeds his people. Couldn't have made it up if you paid me, friend. Listen, the pulpit is where God feeds his people with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He said, you get fed on stage. God's people are fed in the pulpit or from the pulpit. Mm. Listen, listen, family. We're going to get there, I promise you. Jesus never told us, watch this now, he never told us to feed ourselves. Lord have mercy, Jesus. He said, feed my sheep. He never told us to feed ourselves. He told us to feed his sheep. Peter, do you love me? I'm getting ready to take you over there to John chapter 21 right now. John chapter 21. We're going to come back to Nehemiah, but I, I got to follow the script. I got to do it the, the way God laid it out for me because it's important. It's important that you hear exactly what the Holy Spirit is saying right now. <clears throat> In John chapter 21, starting at verse number 15 to verse number 18. 
This is what it says. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, love it thou me more than these. Come here, friend. Love it thou me more than these. He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my lamb. Notice, friend, he don't tell him to feed himself. He don't tell him to feed his, his predecessor. He don't, tell, he don't tell him to feed his, his fellow brethren, the other disciples. He said, feed my sheep. Listen, come here. Verse 16, he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, loveth thou me? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. Listen to what he's saying, friend. He never tell him to feed himself. The stage is where we feed our flesh and ourselves. The stage is where we stand up and perform, but the pulpit area is where men see God and that men are fed from the Holy Men are fed through the Holy Ghost from the pulpit area. Watch this now, verse 17. And he said unto him the third time, friend, this is a verily, verily, verily. God is serious about what he's talking about. And God is really sick and tired of what's going on in the house of God. He's not doing away with the house of God. He's going to clean up the house of God. Watch this now. Verse 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, love it thou me. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, love it thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knoweth all things. That's right, he know all things. And so stop talking about how much God know your heart. Like, that's a disclaimer. Yeah, God do know your heart. He know all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. The Holy Spirit said to me to tell the, tell the, the leaders, the pastors, these, these under shepherds. He said, get rid of your stages and renew the pulpit area. So men and women, boys and girls can see God. Stop performing. This is, this is not performing us. This is, this, is, this is the sanctuary where God promised to meet his people. And people come to see God. They don't come to see you. They don't come to see me. They don't come to hear you. They don't come to hear me. If people are not hearing, thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when you stand before the people, I will put my words in your mouth. And when you open your mouth and speak, they will know that God is speaking. Verse 18, verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girded thyself. You're supposed to be mature now. When you was younger, just coming up in the ministry, some of the things you're doing was okay because you're doing it out of ignorance. God said, that's over. You're supposed to be mature now. When thou was young, thou girded thyself and walked whither thou wouldest. You can't do what you want to do, anything you want to do now. You're supposed to be mature. You're supposed to be grown. God don't put novice before his people. This is what it says, and walk it whither thou would, but when thou shall be old, thou shall stretch forth thy hand, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest go. I'm going to read verse 19. Thus speaking, he signifying by what death he should glorify God. Here's the other thing. Everything we do in that pulpit or in the sanctuary is to glorify God. And even when we're not at the house of God, the things that we do are supposed to glorify God. We're in the image and likeness of God. So we're supposed to, we're supposed to behave just like him. Let the mind of Christ be in you. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he has spoken this, he said unto them, follow me. Listen, friend, follow him where? Follow him to Jesus. We're not just following. People are not just in church just to follow us. We're supposed to be taking them to the Lord. We're supposed to be leading them into the presence of God. If, they, if, if people want concerts, they can go to the concert hall. They can go to places where concerts are done. If they want to go to theaters and movies, there are places for that. But when they come to the house of God, they're not coming for theatrics, friend. They're coming to experience God, to have an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why they come. And we come so that they can have that experience. 
He said, I need for you to get rid of your stages and renew your pulpit areas so people can get their eyes off of you and put their eyes on God. I hear Paul saying right now, follow me as I follow Christ. Tear down your stages. Stages are for performers. And we got a lot of performing in church now. A lot of performing. Because we're catering to people. We're catering to people and we're catering to our own fleshes. You know, actors and singers and stars and all that, they say they're doing things for the people. But it, would they do it if they wasn't getting paid? Come here, somebody. They say what they do, they're doing for the people. But what they do, would they do what they're doing if there was no money involved, friend? So are they really doing it for the people? No, they're doing it for the paycheck. They're doing it to line their pockets. They like the celebrityism. They like the fame. They like the fortune, friend. They're not just doing it for the people. The people are paying their bills. The people are the ones paying to go see them. The stage is for people to go see them, friend. So if it's a lie, they told it. And there are a whole bunch of people who are standing before so-called the people of God and so-called houses of God, and they there because they want people to see them. Their faces are plastered everywhere. Their name is plastered everywhere. Stages. They're performing before the people. They are doing it for the fame. They are doing it for the money. The Bible call them hirelings. I told you it was going to be hard today. I told you what kind of message this was, but I'm doing it in the love of God. Now watch this now because it's important. This is the shepherd's heart. We're talking about the shepherd's heart right now. We're talking about how God feels about the kind of things that are going on in what's supposed to be the sacred places of God. I don't care how, listen, I don't care how far we come as a people. The sacred things of God is still the sacred things of God. Our God change it not. Why are we so, why are we so hard bent on changing God? Why are we is is because is because we're following the voices of men and not God. And God is not pleased at all. Let's go to Nehemiah now. Right after the Chronicles, you're going to see Ezra and Nehemiah. We're going to Nehemiah chapter 8. Start at verse number 1 in Nehemiah chapter 8. He said he's tired of those of you who are, who are just using his people to feed yourselves. In John 21, Jesus is clear about who we're supposed to be feeding. He said, but you're using my people to feed yourselves. I know you don't like it. It's good to the soul, though. Watch what it says. We're in Nehemiah chapter 8, starting at verse number 1. And we're going to read all the way to verse number 14, unless the Lord says something different, maybe to verse 18. But listen to what it says. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man. Watch this now. The scripture lets us know that the body of Christ, we are the one man that God created in Christ Jesus. We are many members that make up one body, but we become the one man. The scripture says in Colossians that Jesus is the head of the church, which is the body of Christ. We are many members, but we make up the one new man. Hallelujah. We make up the one new man. Watch this. Jesus gave up the old body on the cross for the body of Christ. He embodies the body of Christ. He's the head of the church, which is the body of Christ. We gather as the one man. So when people come to the house of God, they can see God. Jesus said, how do they know that you're my disciples? He says, by the love that you show one to another. Oh, come here, somebody. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was, watch this now, that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which is the which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Now, now notice what's going on. They're not coming to see Ezra. They're not coming to see Nehemiah. They're coming to hear the word of God. 
Come here, somebody. They come in to hear the word of God. They are gathering to hear the word of God. And I have a problem with this, and I know God have a problem with this, and some of y'all are going to get a little twisted in the mouth about this, but I don't understand how we're supposed to be the people of God, the house of God, the church of God, and nobody from the pulpit to the pews, nobody has a Bible. Nobody has a Bible. And we can stand before people for hours and give inspirational lectures and speeches, but nothing from the Bible. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent by God? It's right here, family. It's right here, friends. It's right here. I told you what kind of day this was going to be, what kind of evening this was going to be because we're dealing with the shepherd's heart right now. And people are not gathering in your buildings to, to see people flying all over the room and walking all over the room and up here entertaining. No, they're coming to hear a word from God because the word of God is a lamp and light to my path and to my feet. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. People are dying around you because they're not getting any word. They're getting entertained. You feeding that flesh, but they're not getting any words, so your people are not changing. Every, every, every other month, they're coming to rededicate. I don't know what God you're serving, but it ain't the one I serve. And Ezra the priest, verse 2, and Ezra, the, Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation. Hear me, hear me, family. Before the congregation, both men and women and all that could hear and with the understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Listen to this, friend. He bought the book. Why? Don't forget the book. It's all about him. The book, the book, the book, friend. People looking for the book. People want to see the book. Here's what Jesus said. The scripture says in John, it says, Jesus did many things that's not written in here, but the things that are written are written so that we believe. You know why a lot of people sitting in buildings congregating on Wednesdays and Tuesdays and Sundays and Mondays, and, and they're still not understanding because they're not getting any word, friend. They're not getting any word. Listen, listen, listen here, listen. Verse three, and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until the midday before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. This is why people are not paying attention in your buildings, friend. This is why people can sit up in your buildings and be on their phone. They on Twitter, they on Instagram, they on Facebook, they all over the place, but none of them are listening to what's being said because there's no word being said. They doing everything. They got a, they captured by an audience, but it's not, it's not the, the word coming from the pulpit. This word is going to grab your attention. Because it's going to speak to you. It's going to speak to wherever you are in life. This word is going to speak to you. It's like a mirror, friend. It's going to show you yourself, your goods and your bads, your rights and your wrongs. And this is the only way people are going to change. Here it is. Here it is, verse 4. And Ezra the scribe stood up on a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. What purpose, friend? For the purpose of the preaching of the word of God, the kingdom of God. So that men and women could come to know the real true God, friend. Nehemiah and Ezra wasn't standing up there talking about themselves. They were talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, friend. He was talking about, they was talking about the God that brought them out of Egypt into the promised land. Come on. The pulpit area was made for this purpose. God just had, Holy Spirit just had me to tell you that. Stages are for you, but that pulpit area is for God. Here it is, here it is. And Ezra the scribe stood up on the pulpit of wood, which he had made for the purpose. And beside him stood, watch this now. Here's the other problem we got. We got a whole bunch of people surrounding the person in the pulpit, but none of them know the word of God. You, you can't get them to quote you a scripture. A lot of a lot of ignorant people are surrounding, are sitting there, but but they can't they can't help nobody with nothing. You can't come to them and get an answer for nothing. But they are there because they want to be seen. 
I'm affiliated with the pastor. I'm affiliated with the bishop. They want you to know they're affiliated with the bishop. That don't, that's not counting with God. That don't mean nothing to God. We got to stop just putting collars on people and putting titles on people and setting them around you. So what you're doing is you're building your own little kingdom. You got your own little followers and they're following you. They're not following the Holy Spirit. They're not following God, friend. They're following you. Their commitment and their dedication and everything is not to God, friend. It's to you because they're concerned about how you see them, not God. Take a look at all those names there. I don't want to mess them all up. Let's go to verse five. And Ezra opened the book. What did Ezra do, friend? He opened the book when Jesus, in Luke chapter four, verse 18, they brought the book to Jesus. Jesus didn't just stand up before those people and say anything he wanted. They brought the book and the scripture says, when he found in the place where it was written, written about who? Written about him. He began to proclaim why he was sent and who sent him. Told you what kind of day this was going to be, what kind of evening this was going to be. Verse 5 again, so, and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for it was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood. So you see, some of y'all think it's religious, and some of y'all just think that people just, just pulling your chain and treating you like puppets. They stood back here for the reading of the word, friend. You ought to stand for the reading of the word. Your pastor ought to get you to stand and give honor to God as we hear the written word when we open our services. It's biblical, friend, that you stand for the reading of the word. Here it is right here. And they stood and Ezra blessed the Lord and the great God and all the people answered amen. See, friend, you, you, thought, you don't even know this is in your Bible, do you? A lot of y'all don't even know it's in there because a lot of you are not even reading your Bible. A lot of you don't even have one. And the person over you are not even inspiring you to get one. This is how we know it's all about them and not about him. This is how we know we make everything about you and not about him. Hmm. I knew what kind of day this was gonna be. I knew this wasn't gonna be a shout and running around the room. But here's the heart of the shepherd. We're talking about the shepherd's heart. We're not talking about our heart. We're talking about the heart of the shepherd and how the, the shepherd feel about the things that are going on in our, in our edifices. They're not supposed to be glorifying us. They're supposed to be glorifying the Lord. Friend, my time is growing short. I want to thank you for allowing me to be in your space today. Thank you for sharing this time with me today. Got to part company with you, but I will be back, God willing, next week, this same time, on this same channel. And Bishop is going to be praying for you in our time together. So may the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you is my sincere prayer for you and know that Bishop Stevenson is praying for you. Bye-bye, my friend. Bye-bye. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I said, whatever, whatever, whatever.